So I'm joined here today by the one, the only, it is of course the Moroccan devil, Yusuf Zalal, set to take on Peter Barrett, coming up real soon this upcoming weekend. Thanks so much for joining me, man. How are you? Pretty good, man. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for asking. Uh, how are you feeling right now, man? I know the fight is uh, extremely close. I'm sure you've started all the annoying stuff like the weight cut and everything. Uh, how are you feeling, man? Uh, pretty good, man. Everything's going smooth. I was uh, cornering my teammates last night and then uh, had a great night. And we're now back to work. We have another guy fighting on Tuesday, my teammate Dustin Jacoby. And then it's me Saturday. So it's it's been a, a joyful week. Yeah, a lot of good stuff going for you. Did you go extra early so that you could corner all these people, or did it just, you know, line up perfectly? Yeah, so I went there early so I can get to train with my coaches and all that stuff. And if I want to get trained with coaches and stuff, I have to be tethered. So that's why I came here and cornered my teammates, and I could just stay here. And I'm I'm in Vegas. I've been in Vegas since Thursday. Oh, yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. Obviously, a very good situation. Listen, before we talk about the fight, though, last time we spoke after your last fight, which really wasn't that long ago, you were saying you wanted to drop down to bantamweight. Have those plans been scrapped? I know short notice, I'm sure bantamweight would have been tough. Uh, what's kind of going on there? Uh, so we talked to our t uh, my team, my coaches, my strength conditioning, my my nutritionist and all that. We just decided to stay at 45 instead of uh, going to 35. And I did a bunch of testing on the PI. It, it kind of just makes sense for me to go to 35. Uh, I'm, my body type is very different. You know, I'm like, I'm not, I'm lean all year round. So for me, it was to go to 35, I really have to kill myself. And I can only fight twice a week. I mean, twice a, twice a year, you know. So I, I want to fight more than twice a year. So that's why we just decided to, to just get stronger and just get bulk up a little bit more and then just stay at 45 so we can be able to take short notices at any time. That's right, and it's a, it's a good opportunity. So if you were doing 135, you wouldn't be able to take these short notices now. Like, I assume the camps would have to be a little bit longer, too. Oh, yeah, no, no way. I need at least six, seven weeks at least. Yeah, there we go. How long was this camp for you so far? I know the fight got announced not that long ago. I don't know when you found out about it. How was this camp for you? So I've been training since after my last fight, which is six weeks ago. I uh, took a week off and then basically just went to work. So four, four or five weeks, but usually it's four weeks. But I got cold. The fight when I got cold, I only had two weeks. So. And so uh, the the unfortunate thing is you barely missed out on uh, the of course the mystical, the mythical UFC Fight Island. Would you have wanted to compete at Fight Island or is just uh, competing at the Apex? You know, good enough for you. No, nah, man, I, I like this, uh, this. The Apex is fine for me. I don't want to fly 16, 17 hours all the way to Abu Dhabi and and the heat. I love Abu Dhabi, but I I never been there, so I'm excited. I always wanted yeah. to be there, but it just makes no sense for me to fly out that long and be quarantined for three days in the hotel room and all that. So it's 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 insane. Yeah, the biggest thing I heard from the fighters from Fight Island was that, you know, it was very boring. I, di I didn't realize that, but apparently you just stay in your hotel room, you're quarantined. So it sounds like it was cool to be there, but also a little bit boring, too. Yeah, so I'm, I'm cool, man. I'll, I'll be here. I'll fight in the States. <laughs> but listen, uh, how, how's the testing for you been so far? Because I assume you have to have a million tests, right? If you're cornering yesterday, Tuesday, you're going to be fighting that next Saturday as well. Like, I assume there must have been a bunch of tests for you. Yeah, so testing, I get tested... Uh... So when I got here Thursday, I got tested, and then I got tested on Friday, and then I'm gonna get tested on Tuesday, and I'm gonna get tested on Friday again. So, <laughs> so it's a uh, it's a little crazy, but you, you gotta do what you gotta do, though. Well, so how are the tests? Like, uh, I know at one point they were doing the nose swabs, and everybody hated that. I think they switched to mouths. Well, which one are you getting so far? Like, is it just is the it mouth as bad as some of the others? Just the mouth. The mouth is a lot easier than the nose. I've never done the nose, and I yeah. never want to do it. So I'm I'm fine. Yeah, it's a little bit scary when you see like UFC fighters, people that you know get punched oh, in the face for a oh, living, oh. getting getting scared from the no stuff. Like that 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 worries me. It's just like a regular person. <laughs> no, no, that scares me. I'm like, oh, why why do you need to go all the way up my brain? Oh, oh yeah, and people scary. are like, oh, it doesn't hurt. It's just it's just tickling no. your brain. Like that that that's uh, that, yeah, that's not. <laughs> that's good for them. I'm, I'm cool. That's good for them. I'm 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 different. I'm fine. <laughs> there we go, man. Listen, uh, at what point does your weight cut process start for you? I'm sure you've done some of the stuff like water loading. At what point do things start, you know, getting a little bit more uh, intense? Uh, not really, man. A 45 doesn't get too intense, but obviously we got to cut weight on Thursday night before obviously the next day. But it's not that intense for me at all. Like it's it's pretty it's pretty 
straightforward for me when it comes to my weight cut at 45. So it's not that difficult. I mean, it's hard, but it's not difficult. You know, it's not like 35. 35 is hard and difficult. So, yeah. uh, so I'm I'm just happy and just to really just enjoy and focus on enjoying the fight week than anything. And so you mentioned that you're going to be cornering your teammate Dustin Jacoby on Tuesday night. Actually, uh, I'm not. Me? I'm just going to be here because they only have two. Oh, okay. They're gonna have, they're gonna have. Uh, yeah, so this series only allow two corners instead of three. And then oh, okay. my coaches so, are my, uh, my yeah my coaches are calling him when I was be watching from the hotel. Ah, uh, there we go. What did, was it weird for you though when you saw that he had to go through the contender series because he's a veteran, he's fought in the UFC. I mean, he's fought for I think every organization you can think of. Was it weird that he kind of has to go through that process? Yeah, man, it's it's very weird, especially now these days. Like to see guys like four and all get signed and stuff like that, yeah. and then you got a guy who's. Fight the glory world champion twice, fighting Bellator, fighting the UFC, and all that stuff to kind of not have that opportunity. But to, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night, he, he'll show he'll show his uh, his experience and his veteranness, and then he'll show how that he needs to be in there. He's, he doesn't need to fight in regional level no more. So, and they will he'll get shown on Tuesday night. Yeah, it seemed like a very weird thing. Like, I know a lot of people were shocked. Like, wait a minute, Glory veteran fighting on the Contender Series. Like, you know, I think at 30 years old, he's, he's not exactly a prospect. But I guess you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. Especially now these days, you know, like especially yeah. with pandemics and all this stuff going on. But it is what it is, like you said. But in the end of the day, it's like you have an opportunity and then you, you just go shine. For sure. I've heard from a lot of fighters that, you know, we're, we're seeing, especially last night, for example, we saw tons of fights, you know, out of nowhere sort of drop off. Do you have any plans to sort of stick around Vegas and just be there in case of the fights or is one short notice, you know, enough for you? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say no. I'll tell you that. If there's an opportunity, yeah. I'll jump on it quick. So it don't matter to me, man. I'm just, I'm just here for the opportunity. I'm here to have fun. So uh, let's talk about this fight a little bit. Obviously, you're taking on uh, Peter Barrett. What were your thoughts when I assume your manager came to you and, uh, you know, sort of offered this fight to you? Uh, he, he's a tough guy, man. He's he's a brawler. Comes in, you know, comes in from a good gym, has good good training partners and all that stuff. So it's it's definitely a, a a tough fight for sure. So like for me, as my reaction is just to take it. You know, I don't I don't have nothing else to do to be honest. So I was like, that's what they told me. I'm training every day, working out every day, and all that stuff. So for me, I'm staying on pace. So anything that comes my way, I'll take it. So, uh, kind of an obvious question because, uh, you know, the fighters always answer the same thing, but how do you like the matchup heading into this one? Obviously, I'm sure you look at it and it's a matchup that you like for yourself. Yeah, man, it's a, it's a great matchup for my style, you know. I like I like to move a lot. I like to make people miss and, and stuff like that. And Brawlers are f f puts in that one in my style perfectly. So, for me, I just got to go out there and really just show – what I can do, I don't think he ever fought somebody with the same movement, the same speed, and the same <laughs> athleticism that he ever fought before. So uh, he's going to have something that he never saw before. And so I think I saw something on Facebook, too. Uh, are they going to be talking about you on TV in Morocco? Like, did, did I see that correctly? Are they going to be talking about you? Yeah, so uh, actually it was supposed to be today, but they had difficulties with the videos that I sent them. Uh, so they're going to they're gonna have it on Wednesday now instead of uh, instead of today. So they're gonna Wednesday. They're gonna have me on the TV, uh, a main sports channel, and in, in Morocco. Oh yeah, that, that's very cool. How did that opportunity come? Like, did, did they did they have a reporter reach out to you? Like, obviously, it's a very cool opportunity. Yeah, man. That's all. Yeah, this this reporter just texted me, and then they're like, "Oh, can you answer these questions and stuff like that?" I was like, "Okay, cool. Hi, I I got you guys, and I just mm -hmm. I got it done." And so what language are you doing it in? I don't know if you speak more languages, but I know in Morocco Arabic. it's uh, Arabic and French. So you're doing it in Arabic? Yeah, Arabic. And so so how is your Arabic? Because obviously we know you're from Morocco, but I assume being in the States, you can't like sort of speak it as much as I'm sure you'd like to. I speak it, but not that much, you know, but I'm still, I still got it, you know. It's like, that's, that's my, that's my heritage, you know, that's my, uh, that's my land. But so I have it. I was not, I was not as good as I was before, but I still have it. And so does it make you nervous having to go on TV in front of all these people and speaking it, or are you confident about it? No, I definitely was nervous. I ain't going to lie. I was I was <laughs> nervous and shy to, to send them that video. So it was not even live. It was just me recording it and sending it to them. Yes. So that was, that was very, that was very a little hard a little bit, so... 
But at the same time, it's a very cool opportunity because I feel like, you know, when you come from a unique country like Morocco, there's, I think you're like, what, the only uh, UFC fighter that fought multiple times in the organization from Morocco. Like, it's cool to be able to go on TV and build that fan base specifically from your country of origin. Oh, definitely, man. All my followers are mainly from Morocco, to be honest. So this, oh, yeah. is, why, this is why I do this. So, so where did you get, you mentioned the, the followers, they're all from Morocco. How did you sort of get your name out there in Morocco? Because it can be tough sometimes, like, you know, to, to try to explain what MMA is in so, sort of these countries. How, how did you sort of get these guys to discover who you are? Uh, getting in the UFC. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, simple enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm not saying that. Like, Alafay and this and that, they really didn't know that much. But as soon as you get to the UFC, they were like, oh, shit, is, is, we actually have a part of this in the <laughs> yeah. UFC. So that, that, that did the job. That for sure. There's a lot of talk with reporters of this mystical UFC Africa, right? Like there's no specific country for it, but we just call it UFC Africa. Do you think that's something that could be realistic? And if it does happen, you think we could see you on one of those cards? Oh, man, definitely. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely be in one of those cards in Africa for sure. I'll push for it too. So definitely. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like we're getting more and more fighters like you're hearing from Cameroon, Nigeria, obviously Morocco. Like, there could be a really good card with just Africans on it. Like, there's there's good potential. Oh, yeah, man. It's, uh, it's going to be – it's going to be – the numbers are going to be off the roof for sure. 100%. Now, getting back to this fight, though, you're looking you're looking good right now on your record, three fights in a row. Uh, what's been going right for you these past couple fights? Like, what, what's sort of been the key to, you know, amassing all these wins? Uh, just my team, man, and the mentality that we have. It's it's different than any other teams, you know. We're not – we know what we're capable of and we know what we train with and we know the coaches that we have and we know that, that everything we have, the lifestyle we have is completely different than these guys, you know. We're not – we're not a, a camp to camp fighters. We're we're 365 uh, days just staying ready no matter what. Like you fight us, we'll have cardio. You'll fight us, we'll we'll do it. All that stuff. So that's where it really comes down to. I feel like advantage for us having over everybody else. All right. So one last question for you: uh, How do you make it four in a row? How do you see yourself winning this fight come Saturday? Ah uh, man, I'm I, I'm going out there to make a statement, man. It's uh. It's been a it's been fun little two fights I had, but this third one I really want to make a statement and really show my experience that I had the last two fights. I I spent 30 minutes uh, in the UFC cage and I wanna we'll go out there and the third one make a statement on this one. All right, there there we go. Well, listen, man, we look forward to it. It's gonna be a great fight. Obviously, you know that. Thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it, especially so close to the fight. No, thank you, man. Every time.